Okay, morning. We are doing a video walk around of a 2021 Georgetown 36K7. We're going to walk around the outside, show you all as, most, as much of the outside features as we can in the video, and try to pre answer as many questions as we can. Right now, as you can see, I have the awning out, the awning lights are on. One thing you'll notice is the front awning is in the fully up position, the rear awning is in the down position. All you do is pull this, reach up here, and pull straight down, and it bends. And now the front is down as well. Don't push it back up. To roll it back up, just roll the awning up. It'll automatically reset. The reason they don't want you to put, manually push those bars back up is if you accidentally over-center them, it will bind. There's your entrance door here. Steps. And then to the rear of the entrance door is our battery compartment. These are your house batteries for the camper. And there are solenoids, relays, and fuses back in here. We have an outside stereo right here. In the womb. No. It's also Bluetooth, so you can hook it up and you can... On most all of these, they're also connected to the TV, which is located here. On the storage compartment here, inside the storage compartment, we have US or HDMI and USB, GFI, 12 volt outlet, tie downs. This is a double door. The rear door closes first, opens last. To open it, there's a strap. You just reach back in here, pull on the strap, and that releases the top and bottom latch. Always has to be closed first. Front door, closed last, open first. Furnace, this is your outdoor side of it. Your combustion air intake and exhaust. They do recommend in the summer when you're not using the furnace, you might want to put a screen over it to keep the bugs from turning your furnace into a condominium. Something I didn't mention on these compartments, every one of these lights is individually powered. So there is a switch on each light. All the way around. Next compartment has your ladder for the bunk. Again, a light, and the light has a push button switch to turn it on and off. Another storage compartment. Again, pass through and light it. This next compartment is the back side of our wet bay. You can see our fresh water tank. You can see our water filter housing. We don't install the filters. Tank drains going down there. Our water pump. There is a valve on the water pump that connects to this hose with a blue stripe for winterization. What you're going to do is you're going to switch the valve. You're going to take and put the hose into your antifreeze jug. Turn on the water pump and run antifreeze through the entire system. Back here, another storage compartment. Again, pass through with lights. Down here, this is a drill hookup. It is low pressure vapor. You can get a hose made up and hook that right to a barbecue grill or most any propane appliance. Not all, but most. And there is the little metal handle is an on off. And it works just like an air hose. Water heater. Water heater. Okay, had to pause there for a second. So, water heater. Turn this little thing so it's vertical, pull right straight out about an inch, 
and lift it straight up. It's on pins on the bottom. Suburban water heater, very simple. Those are push button resets. If it trips, therm overheats on either side, it will pop up, pop out. You push them back in to reset it. The switch is taped off. That is your on off for your electric heating element. The electric heating element's under the black cover. Gas valve, pretty straight up simple. Turn it on and off from the inside. They work extremely well. Been around. Basic design's been around for, I don't know, 50 years in the RV industry. So, works out real well. Heavy mud flap. Ladder going up onto the roof. Backup cameras up there. Two inch receiver. Seven way trailer connector, standard. Now over here, where we hook all our water up. I'm gonna pause for a second and grab my seat. Okay, try to give you a good camera angle. Black tank flush, when you hook a hose up to this right here, it goes right straight into your black tank to rinse it out. Freshwater tank fill, when you hook a hose up here, it goes right straight to your freshwater tank to fill it. City water fill, I'm not sure why they put the word fill on that, but when you hook the hose to there, that is your city water hookup. So you hook up water here, it goes through the whole coach when you're at the campground. You hook up hose here, it fills your tank. Hook the hose up here, it rinses out your black tank. Your black and gray dumps right here. Black is black, gray is gray. Sewer hose hook up with a cap. And then there is a little cover here. Keep stuff from falling out while you're driving down the road. <clears throat> Another light in here. All of the compartment lights are the same. They have this little on off switch on them. Hot and cold. Outside shower head. There is another small compartment here so that you can run your water hose in and not have to run it in alongside your sewer hose. This next compartment is storage and it has your power cord. There's your 30 to 50 adapter. This goes on the end of your power cord to let you plug into a 30 amp outlet. Your transfer switch is right here. All the power from your generator and your shore cord go through this switch and then onward into the coach. Generator has priority. So if you're plugged in and you start the generator, this switch is going to give your generator about 30 seconds to a minute to warm up, and then it's going to switch the generator even though you're plugged in. It doesn't care if there's shore power there or not. As soon as it sees the generator running, it starts a countdown to let the generator warm up and switches to generator power no matter what. Where that's kind of handy is if you're at a campground or, plugged in, or at a family or friend's place or something and you're plugged in on a low-power outlet and you want to run the air conditioners, you can just start the generator and run the air conditioners, then shut the air conditioners off, shut the generator off, it switches right back to shore power. Down here we have cable TV input. Okay, that is going to your antenna booster switch. Um, I have a lot of people that want to switch that over to run an external uh, satellite antenna. It can be done, but it has to be rewired on the inside of the coach as well. So it's set up for cable television. Down here is your solar charge connector. So you get the uh, portable solar charge panel and they plug in right there. Next compartment forward is our generator. Pause a second. All right, 7,000 watt on and generator. These panels, put your hand at the top, pull straight out. Pull it out a couple inches and then lift it up and it lifts off. Inside here, there's your 12 volt main power. Your start stop switch and your two circuit breakers. If those circuit breakers are off, the generator will still run. You just won't get any electricity out. 
Start and stop. Stop is also prime. If I hold this in the stop position and let go of it, it shuts the generator off. If I continuously hold it, after about 20 seconds, it turns on. Now we are running the fuel pump and priming the generator. If you have not ran the generator in a while, it's not a bad idea to prime it for 30 seconds or so. When you go to start, press start. Your service information is up here on the air filter. Oil filter is right here. You actually access that from the bottom. The drain is right here. And it's turned on and off from this valve. And then your oil filter is right here. Very simple generator. One other thing on this thing here is your air filter part number, your oil filter part number, oil capacity. And then they give you a chart for options on what kind of oil you want to run in it. So, your call. To put the cover back on, set it down, and just push it straight in. Okay, we're in the compartment on the driver's side, just in front of the rear axle. And you see there's another drop-through pouch there if you want to run something out. And light. You'll notice these doors require a bit of force to shut. That is to give you a good quality seal. I got customers want them to close easier and I point out that they'll probably leak. So think of it like a submarine. If the door is open too easy, it'll probably leak. Again, in this compartment, we have the back side where your ladder is hanging and light as well storage. Up here we have a much larger storage area. This is the opposite of the double door side on the other. And then in here we have our starter kit. Our starter kit has a standard sewer hose, toilet chemical, toilet paper, a 110 adapter that will let you put on the other adapter to plug into a standard household outlet, a drinking water hose that's about 25 feet long, and a water pressure regulator. The water pressure regulator is important because you never know what kind of water pressure you have and we use poly plumbing in here so you don't want to be somewhere with 100 psi or better water pressure it will stretch your plumbing out and then you'll have more and more leaks as it goes along so if you're unsure about your water source use the water pressure regulator that's why we provide it all right again this is the same storage compartment just looking at it from another door Coming forward here, this is your leveling jack pump and reservoir. It also, like the rest of them, has a light up above it. Not a whole lot in here. Um, if you have any problem with the jacks, there are lots of videos out there on YouTube. Uh, call the manufacturer. They're real good about helping people with that. Forward here. It's your LP tank. You have a gauge that's connected electrically so you can check your LP level inside on the monitor screen. Your fill, your fixed liquid level gauge, vent port, whatever you want to call it, and your on-off valve. Remember with the on-off valve, you're always going to turn it all the way on until it stops. And the same when you turn it off, all the way off till it stops. Above here, this little porthole is to get access your inverter is behind here, a couple other little things, some electrical connections. All right. Turn signal camera, there's one on each side. Your hood. Windshield washer solvent. Another light. ABS components. Your power steering fluid. Master cylinder, your air filter, your engine dipstick, your transmission dipsticks back up there above it, antifreeze, engine battery. Now the one thing they do is this hood latch. 
in order to put the hood back, I hope you can see this, you have to slide, lift it up and slide this off to the side and then the hood goes back down. I'm not going to lock it right this second, but I will lock it. There's a key on the key ring for the, to lock the hood. All right. Inside here in the entranceway, there are two switches. The one that's illuminated is your mat battery disconnect switch. When you turn that off, it disconnects the 12 volt power inside the coach. The one next to it controls your step. It gives you the option to be either having the step stay out all the time or, open, or go in and out every time you open and close the door. You have a fire extinguisher. You have a 110 outlet that's GFI protected. You have your countertop extension. And then to put that away, you're going to fold these down. Raise up on it slightly, put that one down, and then let the extension down. You have light switches here and there and through the coach. This one here is for those ceiling lights. You have your touch screen, which we'll go into more detail in a bit. Up here is your inverter controller. Because you have a household refrigerator, I tell people all the time, turn the inverter on even though you're plugged in okay that way if you lose power your refrigerator stays cold continues to be powered so you should not turn that inverter off unless you're parked and you're putting the coach away and not using it because if you turn that off and you lose power you lose your refrigerator up here the precision plex panel. It's in kind of an awkward position for me to do this. I'm going to try. Just, there we go. There are four buttons here. Okay. Now, I just press that. Now you can see fuse status. If I press this button, I can go down through the entire list and check every single fuse. Hit the back to the switch left. I can check all my input switches. I can check my monitors. I can make sure I have the right one. I can do wireless pairing. You can also do this from the touch screen. When you get the app on your phone, and the app is Precision Plex, Google or, or Android or iOS, you do this. You press the wireless pairing button, and you hit the pairing on your phone, and it will connect the two. Manual control allows me, if I had a problem, to manually control everything on the coach from this touch panel rather than from the touch screen or from the switches if I had a communication problem. So, and then your fuses are all here. Your Euro bed control is here. You turn it on and off and up and down. Also, there's a little seat belt up here. That has to be plugged in or the bed won't work. There's a safety switch in that seat belt. Up here, we're going to do this. What I'm going to do with this, because most of the features on this are the same as my phone, when we get to the end of the video, it'll probably be a double video anyways, I will uh, sit down with a tablet or my phone, and we'll go over this in better detail so I can see it better. But anyhow, our slide-out control is right here. Press the out button and hold it. Make sure everything is clear. You can see those are closed. And then we switch to the bed and we do the same thing. We put it out. All right, I'm not going to do the bed tilt right this second. I'm going to go back to our home screen up here. All of our lights are right here. We have an all on or all off master, and we got different lights that we can control. Our monitors, fresh, gray, black, tells us our battery voltage and our LP level. That was our slide out. This is our awning in and out. To put the awning in, we just press in and hold it.
and it puts the awning away. Okay, you might notice that I'm pausing this while we're doing certain things because I'm not going to make you sit here and watch an awning roll up. And over here, our generator, push generator. AGS is auto gen start. We have the ability to program this to start the generator whenever we want. I'm going to do more of this with my tablet on the phone because I can do this there. And then our water pump, water heater, and tank heaters right there. Our thermostat to run our air conditioning and heat are right there. And then you got a lock button. You can press the lock screen. So pretty nice layout. Lots of cabinet space up in here. We have a water filter that goes in that housing. All kinds of manuals, adapters, our touch-up paint, some extra toilet chemical. This box right here switches our antennas okay from cable to tv with this little slider switch okay this box up here is our wireless module this is what we pair the phone to there is a label right here tells you about downloading the app and how to pair your phone up here is our paint codes build sheet labels Magic Chef, Convection Microwave, more labels, more storage, microwave plugs in up there, it's on its own circuit, we have our oven and our cooktop, some of this is kind of hard to do one handed, turn the burner on, to the light position, push the little sparker button. A lot of times, because I just turned the gas on, I'm going to turn all three burners on. Uh, you got to push down on the burner. All right, I'm going to set this down on a second. Okay, so all three burners are lit. Now, what I just noticed with this stove, they constantly make little changes. You put this valve in the light position. Hit the sparker, and it lights. Right now it's lighting because it's hot. When I was just lighting it, I had to hold the valve down until it warmed up. So I push down, light, let go, then stay lit. Push down, light, hold it a few more seconds. Once that burner warms up, I can let go of it. Now it stays lit. Now it's adjustable, and then I can turn it back off. Basically, a lot to do the same with the oven. You have the temperature controls and the lighting and all that. Okay, with the oven, see if I can get this in a position where we can view it decently. Um, I'm going to turn this sideways. We can see up in there. It's going to look weird on your screen. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn this knob to the light position. You can see my pilot's lit back there. Now when I turn it to the temperature position, you can see the burner light. I'll put it back to normal so you don't have to stand on your head. And then turn it off. And that's your oven. You got drawers, ton of remotes, TVs, and everything. More drawers, more drawers, and these drawers are self-closing, so. And then you got cabinet space under the sink. Refrigerator has ice and water in the door, and it has a lock knob. This threads in, so when you travel, you put this in so that the doors don't fly open and everything stays in the fridge. When you get where you're going, you remove this, and you can open and close your fridge. Your rice maker's back here. You will notice it has not been detailed yet. That's going to happen later today. And your freezer's down below.
TV, soundbar, fireplace, storage. Your bunks are here. They have HDMI charge ports. They have 110 outlet. And they are designed so that you can fold the top bunk up and use this as a closet. So to do that, you take this extra cushion. This is for your dinette. So that when you can make your dinette into a bed. Again, it's kind of hard to do this holding a camera in one hand trying to film. But we flip this up. Oh, no, we don't. This is different. So what we do is we remove this mattress completely and throw it down on the floor on the other bunk and then flip the bed up. And then underneath the bed, when we flip it up, there are latches that go into those holes to hold it up flat against the wall. You make this a closet. Below here we have two drawers. Across the hall is our bathroom, toilet, instructions are on the lid, <laughs> nice big shower, and oh, toilet controller is right here, big button, big plush, little button, little plush, light switches, sink, that is not a medicine cabinet. That is just a mirror mounted on the wall. All your storage is here. You have drawers all the way down there and storage under the sink. Not quite sure why they didn't put a medicine cabinet in. That's a design thing. I don't have any control over. All right. So right now, the bed is tilted up. When you get your app on your phone, you'll be able to adjust your bed tilt for sleeping or whatever. This is kind of handy for watching TV, and it gives you more walk space through here. It also has to be up in order to put the slide out in. you got storage above the bed, and it's a deep storage all the way across. TV. Has hidden storage behind it. Shirt closet, wardrobes on each side, drawers all the way across the bottom, and then a really tall wardrobe, oops, washer dryer on this side. So there's your whirlpool dryer, and oh, these are Splendid's, sorry, Splendid washer, Splendid dryer. Even better, I like Splendid a lot better than the whirlpools. Now what I tell people and have been telling people for 20 plus years is take all of this soft, frilly stuff, mattresses, comforters, little pillows, all that stuff, and seal it up and save it for the trade-in or when you sell. They're just about useless as sleeping comfort, but they add a ton of value to the trade-in of this coach or to this coach when you go to sell it. In the back, rear bath, we have light switches. This one has not one but two medicine cabinets, foot flush toilet, GFI outlet, drawers all the way down, storage under the sink, your light switches are right here to the left of the door, pull down day shade, and a pull down night shade for privacy. Nice thing with this setup, is it actually has a second shower. A little porthole below the shower is access to the plumbing. Another porthole down there access to the drain. So, well thought out so that you can get the stuff in case you have a problem.
Your TV antenna up here has a signal meter. You can turn it off if you want or turn it on. When you turn it on, the little LEDs tell you what your signal strength is. The more LEDs and the more solid they are, the better your signal strength. There's an attenuator, you can turn it down. That helps you pinpoint signals better. Theater seating. These have heat, massage, and recline. And these little things here are for a little tabletop extension that goes in them. Not sure where they're at because I haven't seen them yet. And then under the dinette, you have storage. And then in front of the dinette, you have another storage cabinet. The, this cabinet is accessible from either door. And then this is just from the front here. Again, with this bed above the driver's passenger area, you have to unplug the seat belt. Turn on the key and push the down button. And there you go. You have storage in front there. No storage there. There's a little cubby hole up there you can put stuff in. On this side, the motor mechanism that controls the bed is all up underneath there. So. Put the bed back up. Strong magnet. Press the up button. Once it's all the way up. Plug in the seat belt and it can no longer move. We have one set of keys here, the other set of keys over here. Our leveling system is right here. To level the coach, we turn the ignition on, start the coach. We have to set our foot brake. 